All right, this is fourth grade, module one, lesson 12. And in this lesson, we're gonna be drawing lots of tape diagrams for some word problems. And then we're gonna be using estimation to look back on our answer to decide if it makes sense. Uh, the thing I like about this lesson is it takes that rounding that we've been doing and then gives it a reason. Why have we been learning to round? Well, it's so that we can estimate and look back on our work to see if it makes sense, if the answer is at least a reasonable answer. All right, teachers, I chose this problem not because I'm going to walk you through all the steps or not because it's, uh, you know, it's a tough problem. But I wanted to show you one way that I uh, modify lessons or problems as I see fit, right? Now, I don't want you to just be a slave to the lessons and follow them perfectly, all right? That doesn't make sense. I want you to use your professional judgment. And here's one example. So the directions say estimate and then solve each problem. Model the problem with a tape diagram. Explain if your answer is reasonable. Well, here's an issue I have with this. Sometimes students cannot even begin estimating the problem, the answer, until after they've modeled the tape diagram. So when I look down here, it says to the kids, first they're supposed to estimate then they're supposed to figure out exactly how many, what the exact answer is using a tape diagram. You know, I have issues with that. Sometimes a mathematician needs to work on finding the exact answer first and then look back to see if the answer is reasonable. So teachers, feel free to swap this problem around and tell students to do B first and then A and then C, you know, or whatever. You get the idea. Mathematicians do not always estimate first, right? Estimation is important, and we should always estimate, but it doesn't have to come first, right? Okay, so I, I will show you, however, how to draw the tape diagram because, you know, tape diagrams um, are a little tricky simply because we were not raised that way to have tape diagrams in, uh, in our toolkit. So it says there are there were 3,905 more hits in January than February. And then we're told that February had 9,854 hits. So it says exactly down here, exactly how many hits did the website have during January and February. So I'm going to begin by writing a little J and an F for January and February. I'm going to do more of the Singapore style of tape diagrams on this one. And, it's, and I'm going to begin, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, and I'm going to begin by drawing both January and February to be the same size. I often begin that way. But then the direction said that there were 3,905, it's right up here, more hits in January than February. So that means January's tape diagram needs to be a little bit longer. And we know that that is the 3,905. All right. And then we're told that February had 9,854 hits. So that means right here, this piece right here, and I'm going to zoom in, is 9,854. 9,854. All right, now I'm going to zoom back out. And then the question says, well, how many hits did they have for the combined January and February? So our big question mark is right here. So the idea would be what we need to do is our game plan would be, well, first we need to figure out January. Well, January is really easy because we know that the, this missing piece is the same length as this missing piece because that's how I started drawing the, the question. So that's 9,854 as well. So to get the total answer for January, we're going to need to add these two numbers together, get January, and then we can add January to February, and now we have the total. Another way we could have done it is add 
separate. Just go 9,854 plus 9,854 plus 3,905. So we could set, make it three separate numbers and add. In fact, I think I might even do that for my estimation. I might say, well, 9,854, that's pretty close to 10,000. Plus another 10,000 because that's down here. And then I'm going to say, well, that's pretty close to 4,000. I'm, I'm using basically front-end estimation, and I can see that this adds up to be about 24,000. So then when we do our actual mathematics, my answer had better be pretty close to 24,000. So that's the idea. A couple of things. First, feel free to modify the question so that you go out of order in something that makes more sense to you. And then secondly, I thought I'd show you what the tape diagram would look like. So here it says on Sunday we have a bunch of fans who attended the New York Jets game. On the same day, more fans attended the New York Giants game. Uh, wait, more attended a New York Giants game than attended the Jets game. Okay, so we have more people who attended the Giants game. Altogether, how many fans attended? So I like the fact that this time around, they're asking us to get the actual answer and then look back. I think for me, as a mathematician, that's kind of what I tend to do, is get the right answer or get the actual answer first, and then I look back to see if my answer is reasonable. But parents, teachers, you are free to swap these if you feel like estimating is a better first step. So I am going to model this, and I'm going to start with a J and a G to stand for the Jets and the Giants, and I'm going to begin by drawing both of these tape diagrams as being the exact same length, all right? And then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to read the questions numerous times, and each time I'm going to model and modify my tape diagram. So I'm going to begin with the characters in the play in this story, the Jets and the Giants, and I'm going to begin with equal tape diagrams. Now I'm going to go back. On Sunday, 77,098 fans attended a New York Jets game. So that tells me right here, this tells me that this tape, di this tape is 77,098, all right? And that tells me down here that this length would also be 77,098 because they're the same length, but I need to keep reading to see what happens. So it says... The same day, 3,397 more fans attended the Giants game than attended the Jets game. All right, So that's telling me that this tape diagram needs to be longer than this tape. And it's going to be longer by 3,000. 397 people, all right? Now, do we know this length right here? Yes, we do. We do know this length. It's because this length and this length are the exact same, and so it's 77,098. So I don't need that question mark. I know it's exactly 77,098. So do I know the entire length? Sure, I just have to add. Do I know this one? Yeah, it was given. It was 77,098. Now, what's the question asking us? Well, the question is asking all together how many fa fans attended the games. So we want to know this whole amount. A couple of ways to get that answer. You could first add these two numbers together to get the Giants, and then you could add in the Jets, or you could add it as three separate numbers. You could say 77,098 plus 77,098 plus 3,397. You have a choice. Two options, both of them will give us the total, and that's exactly what we wanted. Now, I'm not going to show you the addition, because I, I think in this lesson, the important thing is drawing the tape diagrams. And that wraps up 4th grade Module 1, Lesson 12, using those tape diagrams to solve word problems.